Hello everyone, I'm CCBB, and you're tuning into the second In Focus segment for the Revenant expansion, which is set to come the 12th of November. Today, I have a fantastic guest with me, CCP Trash Panda. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. We are going to be talking about something really exciting today. We had a dev block and a video come out this week. Uh, it was called Wealth and Destruction, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to talk about, in depth, the mercenary dens that are coming to the game, and the new deathless ships, and the new damage over time weapon system. So as I'm warping over, could you in, in short tell me what is a mercenary den? Yeah, sure. So the mercenary den is, I would say, a clandestine structure that has been uh, deployed by the Deathless to uh, extract the workforce from Skyhooks in Nullsec. So they're a structure, a, a mobile structure, which you can deploy. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So uh, essentially, yeah. So essentially, they're they're a almost you would consider them almost like a mobile depot. The difference is that they have to be in, in orbit around a Skyhook. They need to be attached to a Skyhook. And specifically, Skyhook, they're around temperate planets, because those are the ones that have a workforce or population on the planet, which we can then exploit. Uh, in the video, you explained that uh, this isn't something that only the Sov owner themselves could deploy. This is something that anyone who finds themselves at a Skyhook that is on a temperate planet could come in and deploy. Yes. So, but it only works in Sov Nolsec where there are skyhooks, correct? Correct, yeah. So this is actually like one of the key things and I think really cool about the mercenary den is that it is it's a personal structure. So there's no there's no ACLs for it, there's no uh, restrictions. It's essentially if you have that in your cargo hold and also you have the skills for them because there is a set of skills for deploying mercenary dens, you can go to an uh, an empty skyhook and deploy it yourself. So that's great for for you the individual. Uh, it could be good for a system or a solve owner who wants to have their own deployed. Perfect. Let's actually dive into some of the the kind of high level overview of what this is. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a deployable structure. Mm -hmm. It can be, like we said, on tempered planets only. Mm -hmm. uh, it produces encrypted infomorphs. And on the 26th of November, a couple of weeks after the expansion, something called Anarchy and Development will also go live. Can you talk to us about those two things? First of all, what mm -hmm. is anarchy? So when it comes to the anarchy, um, this is probably one of the key things because it's it's more of the detrimental traits that the mercenary gen is going to be developing over time, which is that if nothing happens, this mercenary den, the people inside it just kind of go a bit, um, I don't, I don't want to say feral, but they can, you know, they, they get disorganized, they get, you know, they increase their anarchy. Um, and as a result of that, it means that it starts having a detrimental effect on the Skyhook itself. So uh, the temperate Skyhooks, these are Skyhooks that provide workforce to the system, to the Sov Hub. And if you let the Anarchy increase over time, that will actually start affecting the amount of workforce that a Skyhook is producing. Uh, the other side of that coin is development. What What is that? So as a result of uh, an increase in development, you essentially get an increase of the amount of encrypted infomorphs that are generated from the structure. Generally speaking, you want these to be up and up for, for weeks so that it gets more developed and is paying you out uh, at a higher rate, right? Correct, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Both of these things, anarchy and development, can also be affected uh, by something called mercenary tactical opera operations. Mm -hmm. What are those? So the mercenary den will, at a, um, a various levels of uh, time, will provide you with uh, a an objective that you will have to do in space. Uh, so that would be the the possibilities are endless. We are hoping to launch with at least a few of these um, these operations, and the idea is is that you complete them, and that will have an impact on the anarchy and the development at the same time. So. Uh, essentially what will end up happening is if you've completed one of these objectives, you will have a reduction in the amount of anarchy and you'll have an increase in the amount of development. So these these two uh, bars will end up going like this, so if you're thinking anarchy on this side and development on this side. We have a flow chart just to help uh, okay. kind of gameplay loop to, to show that for a second mm -hmm. as well. Um, just to kind of clear things up for people. So you, you're going to look for a location for this. 
uh, obviously you have to construct the deployable or purchase it. Uh, you will deploy it at a location, whether it's your own space, someone else's space. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after a time, the development will increase. That is something that will naturally increase and cannot decrease over time. So the longer it lives, the more you get out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, anarchy will start to play in there and you either decide to, to do something about that or let it grow. Uh, and there's there's various reasons why you would want to lower the anarchy if it's not your space. So let's say you live in close to someone's area, but you don't have access to skyhooks. And you know that they're not really making use of this, but you mm -hmm. really want the deathless ships and the damage over time stuff. Then maybe you want to sneak in there and put up one of these and and see if you can get that to to live for several weeks or maybe just a week to try and get what you can out of it. Absolutely. Uh, but you'd want to keep the anarchy down so that they don't just tear your structure down, right? <laughs> yeah, precisely. I mean, the 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 way that I look at it is, and I mentioned this in the in the in focus video we did previously, but having those options from a from a play style point of view really does make this structure quite interesting because essentially uh when you're playing with with workforce you're also playing with uh not just the system itself uh, as to its output its uh, upgrades but because you can transport workforce to two different systems you have the uh the potential to impact multiple systems down the down the road so as a system owner, you probably really want to make sure that that anarchy is quite low because you don't want that workforce impact. However, if you are an attacker and you do want to do that, it's actually a really clever way of impacting people's, uh, impacting people's systems, but also multiple systems, because if they're transferring workforce to other systems, then those systems get affected as well. So it's, it's really fascinating from that point of view. Um, it becomes a but, tool to disrupt Equinox of in a certain way on top of linking it to the deathless and and I guess personal gain you could use this as a tool uh, strategically as well uh, absolutely and I think that's that's one of the I would like to see as one of the use cases for this is is uh, a little bit more under the radar disruption gameplay for the uh, for the sovereignty to go on with the flow chart uh, obviously the anarchy can be decreased, but that's only by the owner of the structure, right? Correct, yes. So you can't just put down a bunch of these and then tell people, hey, you are you just deal with them. You, mm -hmm. as the person who put this down, has to go and do the mission. You have to, you're the one responsible for the structure and keeping the anarchy down uh, yeah. and, and taking out the items. And speaking of which, if we go back to the in-game um, the in-game screen share. I put this down yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to access the structure that I have here. Yeah. Oh, I'm too far away. Hold on. No, I was close enough. So okay. it's been generating at uh, a certain rate here. Uh, mm -hmm. And I now have 2,388 encrypted infomorphs. And it's Excellent. just slowly generating this. It can actually hold uh, quite, quite a large portion of this. So yeah. over one day, it didn't generate that much. Obviously, the, there's no development increase on this either. Mm -hmm. um, but you can tell that this is a structure that could be here for a week or two or three and, and really uh, just accumulate a bunch of this. Am I the only person as the owner that can empty this? Correct, yes. You you are the person responsible for, for emptying this, uh, this structure. Um, and if so you... someone attacks this and it's reinforced, because let, let's go over some of those details. This is a structure mm -hmm. that reinforces with a 24-hour timer, yep. uh, kind of like a mobile depot would... I guess that's a two two day thing, but it yeah. has some jitter, which means that it could come out eighteen hours later or thirty hours later or anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't a particularly hard structure to kill; it's just a mobile small structure. Mm -hmm. But it does give the defender, uh, you know, a timer to come and defend this if they want to. Yes. If, if it is destroyed, will these be up for grabs? Will they disappear with it? They they will be up for grabs, yes. So that is also a method of gaining access to these encrypted infomorphs, is that you could go hunting for other people's mercenary dens and destroy them and uh, take the take the rewards. But as opposed to like most of the roaming that, that I see people do nowadays, which is just filamenting and looking for trouble, mm -hmm. you kind of have to be local for this because it's generating a time of the day after. Yes. Um, and if you own one of these in, in enemy space, you, you can't hope that the filament the next day will get you to where you need to go. You kind of need to be locally there, mm -hmm. get to know where you can actually establish these, uh, 
kind of creating more local conflicts than yes. than random uh, filament type conflicts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could you could if you're filamenting in, you could just go and re reinforce the structure for for the giggles. But like, I mean, unless you want to come back, you're not really going to get anything out of it other than causing a bit of a nuisance. And it'll I mean, self repair if no one attacks it in the in the final yeah. Game, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, it could also be that as a result of you just hitting the structure, it could force a fight with the with the locals. So there is that that um, as an aspect of it. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go hop now into uh, into some of the new ships because these infobars that this is generating, uh, they are used to acquire the deathless ships. The mm -hmm. Scarab Breacher Pods, uh, which is the damage over time weapon system. Uh, we want to talk about those things. I'm going to hop into the Destroyer first. Mm -hmm. The Tholos. Now, we have talked about these a little bit, but we haven't given pe the people details on like their other weapons that are on the ship. Sure. Uh, this will be the first time they actually get to see what these ships really are like. Exciting. The these things... Uh, they're kind of DPS monsters. So if oh, we yeah. first of all, first of all, let's just appreciate how cool the the RT made this look. It's like this crazy amalgamation of of Kaldari and Minmatar fused together with all these tubes going everywhere and into there. And honestly, like the RT nails it every time. But but this this went even further than what like whatever I would have expected from a Minmatar Kaldari hybrid. It looks wow. like this. Kind of like cyberpunky, like almost like diesel punk yes. tubes everywhere. It's very industrial looking. Uh, I think I think they look super cool. I'm yeah, gonna try absolutely. something here. I'm gonna try to do the a boarding on dock. Oh, it's too quick here. <laughs> do a little loop to loop. We'll see if we can do it again. Yeah. But um, speaking about these ships, mm -hmm. if we look at the bonuses on them, yes. they have a local rep bonus a shield boost amount and yes mm -hmm. this is a new window for those who don't don't like new stuff you can make this small and just look at this stuff but look at how cool it is i believe that uh in the future the plan is to have your skin and your your kill mails and and kill marks displayed on this as well but i digress mm -hmm. yep. the bonuses on the ship is mm -hmm. a kaldari destroyer will give this a shield boost amount so a local rep amount whereas the minimitar destroyer will give it a web resistance it's a, mm -hmm. it's a new bonus, isn't it? It is a new bonus. It's just the the first of its kind, and it's also like an interesting uh, addition to the Bimitar like, Destroyer, like DNA, essentially. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's also fascinating because it effectively uh, really plugs into the DNA of the Deathless ships in the sense that you want to be able to get in close, and we'll talk a little bit more about the close range of these weapons in a sec. But Essentially, it means that under the effect of a web, you are faster than other ships that would be trying to close the distance. On top of that, you're also a cloaky, covered up ship. Mm -hmm. So this is a destroyer that can warp around cloaked. It can be bridged mm -hmm. by, by Black Ops. Uh, it can get in close. It gets to choose when it wants to start the engagement. And then when you are in brawl range, you have a web resist and a local tank. That is mm -hmm. basically solving the problem that, that brawlers have. It's the fact that they can't close that gap. And yeah. I think most solo pilots are brawlers at heart, but the, the environment pushes them to adapt and become yeah. kiters because they just don't like losing <laughs> ships so much. But this yeah. is something that, that it's kind of built to let you get into brawl range, start that engagement. And even like you said, if you have a web resist and the target doesn't, you can always scram web them and pull range you can mm -hmm. disengage from that type of a fight and then warp away if you want to so it gives exactly. you a lot of control once you're in the brawl range yeah and then on top of that with the uh shield boost bonus you also have quite an effective local tank to kind of hold off that that dps in that brawl range which i think is really cool yes uh one other thing that a brawler needs is needs to kill its target before all of their friends arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where actually a couple of different things come in. Uh, it has the ability to launch breacher pods, mm -hmm. which are the uh, the damage over type system, the damage system. But that's not all. This ship, uh, if we look at the attributes of it, actually, let's look at the fittings of it. Mm -hmm. It gets two 
miss health slots and two uh, turret hard points as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've I've cooked up a fit here, which I think honestly might become uh, quite usual. You see this on something like a uh, a ramjack. Mm -hmm. This is basically a double medium ancillary shield booster fit. It has a cloak. It has two rocket launchers, two light auto cannons. If we look at the bonuses again, you have bonuses to to just pure damage. You don't yes. have any range, which means your weapons aren't going to reach really far. Mm -hmm. And then coupled on top of the uh, the small breacher pod, that is also a very short range damage over time weapon system. Is that correct? Yes, that is very correct. Yes. So it, that's one of the things with the with the uh, weapon system as well. Obviously, you have the small projectile turret bonus, which I mean, I guess technically you could fit artillery on, but really you're kind of thinking auto cannon for that kind of range. Um, but the other thing to note is that it's not. Um, it's not like a missile bonus. It's specifically rocket damage bonus. Yes. So that really does in reinforce that kind of short range. So really, for the Tholos, you're, you're not really going to be wanting to engage in less than 10 kilometers. Like, that's that's the kind of ranges that we're talking. So really up close. And yeah, super high damage. But the other thing is that because it's multiple weapon systems, um, bonuses to multiple weapon systems, it also requires a lot more skill to, to pilot effectively. You know, you're going to have to, if you want 100%. to run those Tech 2 auto cannons and also those Tech 2 rockets, you're going to have to have those skills for it. And the actual skills of managing all those buttons. Uh, yes. When you have suddenly two ancillary shield boosters, you got your local tank in the scram and you're mm -hmm. making sure you're orbiting the target and that your rockets are firing and you're maybe defanging some drones and yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Absolutely. making sure that the pod, the breacher pod, is actually applying uh, and that actually does damage for... Um, I believe 75 seconds that it's Correct. taking down damage wise, Correct. but it has yes. a 10 second spool time. So you can, you can, well, not spool time, uh, cycle. you can cycle time, sorry, yes. which means that if you're in a brawl, you could put the, the damage over time on one target and then keep fighting him. Someone else lands, you put the damage on time on that guy. And suddenly mm -hmm. two guys are having their, their, their health tick down. Yes. Yeah. Um, if I show this off, so this ship, it also gets drones. It gets one light. Uh, well, it can carry two, but it can put out one light set of drones. Mm -hmm. This is quite a lot of damage for a uh, for a destroyer, especially when you count in the fact that the damage pod itself, it's taking for 75 seconds. You could go in, put this on someone, and then leave, and it'll keep da damaging that person, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. For 75 seconds, unless, unless yeah. that person docks or, or jumps away. So you could keep dipping in and out, making use of the, the web resist to quickly get close enough, put the dot on him, and then leave. And then mm -hmm. someone else is maybe holding him at range or maybe long pointing them. Yeah, uh, It opens up a very different way of fighting where you don't have to stay in the thick of it. But mm -hmm. if you are in the thick of it, uh, and here we have zero bonuses. We haven't, we haven't put uh, ballistic controls or anything in the lows. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is a quite a decent chunk of damage you're putting out. Six forty. It's four hundred and forty DPS plus then the the damage over time, mm -hmm. and it can tank itself quite well. Uh, I think this will be kind of a dirty little brawler of a destroyer. Absolutely. I mean, I've I've described it internally as almost evil at times. Like it's it's beautiful, but it's also evil. Yeah. The, <laughs> The dot, um, we're going to have so many people dying in like weird places mm -hmm. that uh, you're going to have kill mails pop up. They go, oh, he did die. Like once you're off that grid and you're mm -hmm. different. Uh, yeah, I'm looking will... forward to, to, to what kind of shenanigans this ends up uh, leading to. Yeah. And the other thing is like, if you've got the dot effect on you while you're in war, you could die in war. Yes. Yeah. Which is uh, the only way currently to die in warp is if you're smart bombed mid warp. Um, yeah. But uh, the other thing is you don't often get kill mails once you're off a grid. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Up to now, the way to get a kill mail is if someone you just almost killed warps to a gate and then rats kill him, that'll sometimes still pop up. You're like, oh, he did die. <laughs> um, but that's going to become a, a probably a far more like normal occurrence. Well, maybe mm -hmm. not normal, because the way to counter this is still just local rep. We're getting remote rep, right? Yes, correct, yeah. So maybe to just explain the, the breacher pod a little bit more. So the the key thing is that um, it's still, even though the breacher pod is uh, attacking the internals of the ship, 
it's still going to be uh, damaging from the outside in. So imagine like the it'll hit the shield first, then shield armor, and armor then hull. Yeah. So the idea is is that like the the HP of the ship still matters. You're not just focused in entirely on the hull. Yeah. Um, so that means that you are you can local rep yourself, or you can receive remote reps to kind of counter that effect. But obviously, it's a sustained effect that's going to happen over seventy five seconds. Um, but the key thing also to mention is that uh, it bypasses all resistance. Yes, so it. you are you are attacking directly the the HP, not the not even the HP, the HP of the ship. Yes. So it's directly damaging the the health pool instead of the the, the effective hit points, like which will increase by resists, it doesn't care about resists. No. No. Um, the way to balance something like this is difficult because you have everything from tiny frigates up to mm -hmm. gigantic battleships, titans. Like the, the mm -hmm. scale is enormous. Yeah. Uh, how have we decided to make the application on this work? Yeah. So um, regarding this, we basically have two two thresholds that we want to hit. Um, and so for this one, it's essentially um, you're either doing 1% of the ship's total HP or you're doing 200 DPS. Like, and that's for that's for the, uh, the breacher pod, the small one. Now, those numbers are like could could change a little bit. We're still a little bit in the balancing. But essentially, the idea is, is that, OK, so if you're in a, a like a very, very large ship with lots and lots of HP, like 1% of its health is you know thousands of of hp so we don't we don't want that so essentially in that case when the when the breach pod hits the ship it will then determine okay is is one percent more or less than 200 dps and then it will pick the lowest so essentially it means that you can still do damage to things like carriers or dreadnoughts or whatever but you're not going to be doing one percent of that dreadnought's HP every second. No, that would be a ridiculous <laughs> amount of DPS. Uh, be, yeah, exactly. That was one of the worries that people had. Like, will this just kill certain things? Like dread bombs? Will ten of these show up and just kill all the dreads? No. Uh, no. And local tank and stuff will obviously counter the the type of damage this puts out as well. Yes. But Absolutely. for like beefy targets, I don't know. Let's say a battleship fleet fighting another battleship. A few of these on one side spreading uh, mm. dots on different targets that could really start to add up over the course of the fight. Yeah, absolutely. And and if, if you just do some like quick math on it, essentially um, you have 200 DPS coming from the the breacher pod. Uh, you have 75 seconds of um, like duration of the of the effect, but with a cycle time of less than that you can apply to multiple people. And I mean, uh, again, the cycle time is also still a little bit up for debate, but even at 10 seconds, you could potentially apply to up to seven people while the D while the dot is still on all the others. So it the, the potential DPS of this ramps up really quickly. So the way that I would see this is that I, I would think that fleets would probably want to at least have a couple of these in the mix because of just the sheer like raw DPS output these can put out. It does depend on the ranges that they're fighting at. Of uh, course. In today's meta, there's very little up close brawling like that. Yes. Um, but these are uh, cloaky ships that could get into places. They mm -hmm. they could be they could end up being far more prevalent in in wormholes where fights are usually a lot closer and a lot more brawly. Mm -hmm. um, it remains to be seen what players end up doing with it. If this becomes the solo PvPers dream ship. Uh, if it becomes the small gang, kind of, can we hold targets, go in, mm. put a dot on them, and then leave and, and like hold them at range and just slowly see them disintegrate? Or will this become a tool that the, the big groups use, blops bridging them around, taking wormholes with them? We have no mm. idea how they're going to use it, but it is for sure an interesting tool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in particular when it comes to blops, there will definitely be... Uh, very effective because generally in in like when you're actually jumping at a target if you're hunting a target you're quite close to them when you you know light your sino anyway so yeah probably find that these would be quite effective um like hunters the bigger uh, brother of the tholos mm. uh, and the ship that i'm actually a little bit more excited about is the sino mm. and this yeah. is for the first time ever a, a black ops capable uh battle cruiser Yes. So if I close all these things, this is essentially just a battle a battle cruiser version of the destroyer here. And 
looking at it again, this is just some crazy amalgamation of, uh, mm -hmm. of a Ferox that has had a, a tornado top wing attached to it. Mm -hmm. It's got tubes everywhere. All these things are just like outside the tubes going into one spot with it looks crazy cool like you can even you can even see on on the right hand side you can see a little bit of hurricane in the in the wing yes. tip there like i and, I, and I, the back of them as well like this is very minimatar kind of thruster placement and just this is such a cool ship yeah um for it. i'm gonna do the same before we undock and actually mess around with these a little bit let's talk about the bonuses on this ship Mm -hmm. uh, this also has a local tank bonus. Yep. It also has a web resist bonus, albeit uh, maybe a web resist on a smaller target that can get under guns might be more useful. But this mm -hmm. still might help you if you're, I don't know, at like getting grappled uh, and holding yourself at like max grapple range. It might affect you less. Uh, yeah. You might be able to scram web another battle cruiser and still pull range or another cruiser. Mm -hmm. All of those same things still apply. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, again, gets close-range missile damage bonus and projectiles. This can use a command burst, which now means you could have a blobs-capable battle cruiser that can bring mm -hmm. command burst onto, onto a grid. Uh, but this does get an optimal range falloff for projectiles and missiles. So this becomes a little bit more blurred, where this, this can project a little further than the destroyer can. Yes, correct. I mean, there's, there's still, as, as seen there, there's still a bonus to heavy assault missiles compared to heavy missiles. So yeah. you obviously don't want it to be really long range as um, some heavy missile doctrine ships are. Um, and it's we just still... the base version of the, the... It's not the like the double bonus that some ships get to, yeah. to range. And like you said, yeah. the bonus is kind of tied to the heavy assaults. But you can, if you want, put heavy missiles on this uh, and yes. completely spec a fleet into that if you wanted to. But yes, again, absolutely. This only gets half and half. So it's another very interesting setup where he gets three turrets, three launchers, uh, a slot for a cloak, and then the medium breacher pod. Mm -hmm. uh, does this work exactly like the other one? Yes, ex exactly the same. The only difference is slightly larger range and also more DPS. So this one can put up to 1,000 DPS. 1,000 DPS. That's a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also reaches to 12 kilometers when fully skilled uh, at the base. It's going to be 8 kilometers. That can mm -hmm. be quite a big difference if you talk about grapple range and how it applies up close versus further away. You yeah. could also be dancing on that edge of scram web range where you want to keep someone scram webbed but dip out of them scramming you, making use of that web bonus. Mm -hmm. um, here I've pushed the ship into uh, uh, specking both for damage on auto cannons and for the heavy assault missiles, uh, and this it's a high number for a battle cruiser. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so if I turn off the the breacher pod, this gets to have uh, a medium set of drones, has enough for a couple of lights on top of that as well. Uh, but I mean that's a lot of damage from from turrets, missiles, and drones combined. Just that on its own, right? Mm -hmm. That is a lot of damage. And then you count in the fact that it does have a potentially 1,000 DPS uh, <laughs> damage over time. It'll take for 75 seconds. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a monster. Mm -hmm. I am yeah. incredibly excited to see what people do with this thing. Uh, and I can't wait to fly it myself either. This uh, to finally start brawling again and kill things <laughs> quick enough, hopefully. I, I'm absolutely the same. I'm, I cannot wait to fly this ship. I mean... I, I really think the the current specs of this ship, like we're we're sort of almost going to be changing the way that at least small gang fights occur, and it's like we'll likely try and push back towards more broadly matter for sure. We'll we'll see how the the small gangers feel about it. I'm sure yeah. a lot of soloers will feel confident in this. Yeah, I'd be terrified to see That's someone it. like Eye Beast or something in in, mm -hmm. in a ship like this. Um. I do want to do some tests. I want to undock in this. Mm -hmm. I want to go to a, a place where we actually got CCP Convict waiting, uh, and we want to show the the weapon system actually in uh, in effect. We want to shoot him with a couple of breacher pods. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your your? What do you think is going to happen here with the the first target, the Kisrael? Do you think he stands a chance? <laughs> I mean, I I'd say absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I think once the ship gets into close range mm. and it gets I mean, its target locked down, there isn't much yeah. it's going to do. So I'm going to scram web him first here. So I've caught my target here. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we could do a lot of damage with our, our, our weapons, but I just want to shoot one breacher pot at him. Uh, as you can tell, this is a, a missile type that goes to him. And now it's going to start ticking for 251 damage. That's dependent mm -hmm. on the the size, well, the HP of his ship. Uh, we should see different numbers here when I shoot him in the rattlesnake afterwards. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so as I mentioned before, the the formula has two two different variations. So it's it's a thousand DPS or one percent of the ship's hull or one percent of the ship's health, and it picks the lowest. So in this case it's uh two 251 essentially we we don't really want it to be doing a thousand dps directly to uh, a ship that only has seven thousand health because then it does you know, that would be a little insane. bit rough it would be yeah exactly so does it take the the health pool of the ship before or after you've put any modules on it so if you put a bunch of shield extender on it would it be taking more damage uh, yes it would take more damage it, it's it's uh from the moment the breacher pod hits it then takes the total HP of the ship. So you can tell now, I've only hit him once, and he's now, uh, he, I believe he was shield fit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be taking, I think it's about to stop now, yeah. It put him into 25% armor <laughs> with just one application of mm -hmm. a medium breacher pod. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if I'd been shooting him on top of this, refiring my breacher pod, I mean, drones out and all that shebang. This is one brutal little brawler. Not mm -hmm. little at all, actually. No. Um, but there is obviously the, the difficulty of being in brawl range in EVE. If you're in mm -hmm. brawl range, that's usually where you end up dying very quickly yourself. Yes. You end absolutely. up getting caught by whatever backup shows up as well. Mm -hmm. um, but if we remember that number, 251, if we could ask Mr. Conway to hop into the Rattlesnake, he boards that... We can see what type of damage the breacher pod would be doing against a much bigger target, and then afterwards to a flycatcher, a much smaller target. Mm. Oh well. So this time around, we're going to shoot him, and then we're actually going to swap to his POV, uh, and we're going to only see uh, what this looks like on his end. We're going to shoot him and see that it's now 793 that is taking down. And if we swap mm -hmm. over to uh, Convict's point of view for a second, I could now just fly away, having done my damage to him. Um, I could have maybe someone else point him and hold him at range. If he's not quick enough, I could cloak and just chill next mm -hmm. to him. But it's still ticking down. And if he yep. leaves this grid, if he warps away, uh, he will still continue to take 793 damage in this case for 75 seconds without <laughs> me having to be close and, and be in the danger zone, so to speak. Mm -hmm. what are the ways to stop the damage from ticking down so really at this point once you've been in, like hit by the breach pod the way that you would stop it conventionally is you would need to make sure that you have some sort of local rep or or remote rep that can counter the amount of damage that's being been given now obviously um one of the things when it comes to say logistics is that it's a very sustained amount of damage. So it's not like you're being bursted down. And so therefore, like, it could be quite easy for a logistics ship to kind of catch that and, and negate that effect. Um, but the other alternative is to to dock. Uh, if you dock, there's the, the damage goes away. Um, but obviously, if you're affected by weapon timer, you may be denied entry to the, the, the structure. So you may end up uh, like not being able to get to safety in time. So I believe I, if I, you leave system as well is the other yes. other way. Would it be only three gates or what about worms? So we're still trying to figure out with the wormhole stuff. I mean, um, probably uh, likely it would uh, be the same, but we just need to make sure that we want to, from a from a balance point of view that that's that's okay. So yeah, it's a lot still... of wormhole fights happen both sides mm -hmm. of a wormhole as well. Yeah, but exactly. So it could be an interesting to... way to to juggle it as well because you do end up polarizing yourself at some point and then you're still stuck there with the yeah, yeah, yeah. ticking yeah. down yeah um so docking up leaving system those are mm -hmm. the two ways to, to to kind of stop the damage completely yes but also if you have to be in the system or on a different grid you can still repair this uh and and the target would 
in some cases be able to stay alive. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, and the other thing is that we when we um, looking at the DPS as well, one thing that we we from a design design philosophy that we wanted to install is that this this one weapon won't completely destroy the ship. So seventy five seconds, one percent like health each time. Uh, you know, you you'll take a lot of damage, but we don't want this to be you press this one button and the person dies like that would yeah. just be that would be too broken at so, least from the get go but i mean if i put this weapon on someone who's already hurt it can yeah. still finish them off right yeah. correct yes correct so this isn't some like in in many there's many ways to do damage over time in some cases it does a lot of damage but never does the killing blow hit mm -hmm. this can do the killing blow yes. but the first hit won't just like oh you've won because that would yeah. be would be ridiculous yeah exactly if we swap uh, the stream point of view back to to the mine here and we actually lock him up, we can actually see what sort of damage we put on him here. Lock him up real quick. Okay, so he's gone into a little bit of armor damage, 78%. Uh, he was taking a lot harder. He does have a way more buffer. If we mm -hmm. hit him again here, it's just going to continue again. It'll start hitting the shields completely ignoring all resists. It'll continue doing this damage number throughout the shields. As it goes into armor, it'll keep doing the same damage number because it's based on the HP total of the ship. It's got nothing to do with individual HP levels of the shield, armor, and hull. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are small explosion effects, so you can, you can kind of see that there are... Like, yes. it's being blown up from the inside in various places, so you can tell if a ship has this effect on it. Mm -hmm. So you can, could look at a target and go, hey, he's been hit with this thing. And in this case, it actually just took two Breacher pods <laughs> to finish him off. <laughs> um, a goodbye Rattlesnake. But that is, of course, uh, 75 seconds. No, twice, sorry. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good way to kill a big target. However, mm -hmm. people probably think, well, is this the way to, to solve dealing with Vargers or dealing with local mm. tanks will still tank this up quite well. And this was a buffer fit. So this thing... Uh, oh, I don't actually get kill mills on the server. But this thing was uh, very extender fit, kind of fleet fit in a way. Um, a yeah. local tanked ship would be taking less damage and mm. would be able to wrap that up and fight that damage. But Correct, yeah. Their cap boosters would be burned. It'd be, it would help you kind of whittle them down, so to speak. Yes. Yeah, um, and... Just as a, an extra note, uh, you'll notice that when you have fired the Breacher Pod, you will see um, in your buff bar at the top of your cap, yeah. you will see that you, like, that you have affected someone with the Breacher, but equally the person that is affected by the Breacher will have a, you are under the effect of, uh, of the Breacher Pod. That way, um, because obviously the the graphics are beautiful, but we also have to consider the like how we message that to the, the person if yeah. they have low graphical settings. Good point. So you can tell that you've you've hit something. If we get yeah. Conway to hop into a fly catcher this time around, actually I can't lock the while he's oh no, he was quick enough to board it. Uh, we should see a significantly lower damage than we saw with both of these two. Yeah. So if we hit him, it's only doing 101, which is, you know, it'll whittle down, but it's not something that'll quickly deal with a fly catcher that but let's say you're being bubbled by several. If you're able to put this on different targets, mm -hmm. over time, this is going to whittle them down, and then you could obviously finish them off yeah. uh, with your normal weapon systems. I think this is a very exciting weapon. I think these are incredibly exciting ships. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any limitations to the dot, though? You can't, as far as I understand, put them on, on structures. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. So they're, are, they're not... They're gone. Are there any other things that it cannot hit? Um, at at this point, no. So we we're, we're mostly focused on uh, mostly focused on ships, um, making sure that that you know the damage works well on ships and also the interactions between those. Um, but that that's essentially what we what we've uh, targeted this this weapon to be able to shoot. So you can use this against NPCs. Yes, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, to to mention this is this can be used in PVE as well. Yeah. You can shoot NPCs. It's essentially it's if it's a the ship, it's a valid target regardless of whether it's a um, an AI or a player using it. 
one interesting uh, thing that we've been talking about in the community area is because these are like the whole deathless versus drifters. It'd be interesting if uh, if people put this on drifters to negate the the mm. doomsday that it happens, right? To like pop this mm. on one and then leave and see if the drifter keeps ticking down. <laughs> There'll be interesting ways to use this PVE wise as well. Um, yeah, I'm I'm incredibly excited for the ships. I don't know what else to say. Uh, they seem to be working better against bigger targets. Mm -hmm. They, you know, in some way, like. Maybe you don't want to be that close to a Varger that showed up to fight you. Uh, but if you can, pop one of these and then dip and then watch it just slowly whittle down. It could win you some fights that you couldn't possibly win before, but we'll uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything I, else to add before we, we call it here? I was going to say I, I would be really interested to see like one-on-one -on -one via Varga, like how the Cenotaph would actually end it. Because obviously like such high DPS... Um, yeah, but obviously Varga also has high DPS. So I'd be interested to see like I, I don't know if you want to get that close to a Varga ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> maybe you can dip in close, put this on, and then use your web resist to, to get out mm. of range and maybe you'll get out of there. We'll see. I, I don't think this is the complete solution to it, especially the active tanked ones. Mm. They'll just wrap through it, but it'll definitely burn a lot of their cap boosters. Uh yes. in some cases, uh depending on their fit, it could it could significantly help in, in some situations where you're fighting much bigger targets. Yes. I'm also, honestly, I'm, I'm excited to see what theory crafters do with this in fleet settings. In mm -hmm. like, you can try to overprop these. You could hundred amend these and go into ESS where you have a web resist. You could go, you know, you could do all kinds of crazy things with these that uh, mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see people try and try and experiment with. Yeah, absolutely. I'm also, one thing I'm really fascinated to see is, um, if fleet commanders use potentially like wings of these in big fleet fights because obviously that you wouldn't want this as a doctrine ship but as a force multiplier in a in a fleet engagement this could be really interesting so i'd like to see something like that where it's like oh yeah we take in you know five cenotaphs to spread damage across the the fleet that kind of thing to kind of like stress out the logistics or something to try and use that sort of hit and run tactics I feel like how um you know, command destroyers are used in, in fleets these days where it's like you use the command destroyer to try and separate portions of the fleet from each other. Like, yeah. I'd love to see that kind of... That, and then we only points. have to, to get into that danger zone for a little while and yeah. then they could, you know, decloak, hit a target, burn away and then cloak up again and then and then yeah. hope for the best. Yeah. Now exactly. I've landed my hit and I know this is going to be ticking and... Mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how people use it and in what situations they think it's most useful mm -hmm. um i think we're at the end of our time this is actually a pre-recorded segment like the last one being shown in the the break on the at on the finals mm -hmm. i have no idea who is competing next because it's not happening yet so whoever is about to compete good luck um thank you so much ccb trash finder for showing up and uh helping me explain the mercenary den the uh, encrypted infomorphs to give a deep dive on the ships themselves and how the damage system works. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming.